Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dragon Arts Computer Quarter, and today we are jumping into our gameplay and playthrough of Hold the Gap 85, and I got the scenario all queued up, and I'm getting ready to jump into it. We're going to do a little bit of historical background on it before we uh, actually get into the gameplay. So what we're looking at is, uh, we're looking at scenario 1502, uh, you know, and I, <laughs> I can speak German, I really can, and yet... I took I took a year in junior high, three years in high school, and one in college. So I can speak passable German, and it still trips me up all the time. Uh, Aschaffen, Doug, West Germany, June 15th, 1985. After sustaining heavy losses in the Battle for Würzburg, NATO has decided to withdraw to its last line of defense before Frankfurt. German and American engineers have spent the last two days converting Aschaffenburg into a fortress, and the U.S. 3rd Armored Division and the remains of the German 12th Panzer Division have been ordered to conduct a delaying action through the Spessart. Uh, the Warsaw Pact juggernaut must be halted at all costs. Now, it says designer knows best played as NATO or human versus human, but we're going to be playing from the NATO side. So, what exactly does this mean? Let's take a look at the grand picture. No, not that button. That button. So we know the attacking are the third, the West German or East German Third Panzer Division. We'll see at the beginning of the war they started up here near Gera, and we can assume that they crossed the border near Hof and took this autobahn down. Probably ran right into the second uh, armored cav at Barnberg, and now this is where. I'm not really sure historically historically where they would have gone. Would they have forced the bridge at Barnburg and gone on to Klings uh, Kitzingen? I know how to speak German, I swear to God I do. Or would they have gone up to Schweinfurt? Well we're say the scenario says that the remnants of the twelfth Panzer Division and Third Armored you know, here's Third Armored here, it's more third mechanized than fifty four. Uh, and here's Aschaffenburg right here. So 12th and 3rd Armored were detailed to uh, defend Aschaffenburg and Frankfurt, which is right up the road. That's like maybe 20, 25 miles, yeah, half an hour's driving, I think. Um, so we can assume that the, the German, West German 3rd crossed the Toff, came down here through Brandenburg, up to Schweinfurt, and then across over to Aschaffenburg. That's what the the historical situation is looking like. And this takes place on 15 June. And I think the war officially started on 10 June, or was it the 5th of June? So it's only been a few days, not very long at all. So uh, we're going to be playing in normal mode. Let's go ahead and get this started. There we go. We're going to have NATO. We'll put that up on automatic. I'm not going to... Uh, Put fog of war on uh, mainly just so I can let you guys see how the AI operates, see what the computer decides how it's going to move, and then I can give some more funny commentary as we see what the allies are doing. I'm not going to give any advantages. Let's take a quick look at the different rules. Lots of different rules, dialogues. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Uh, you pretty much have the choice between manual defensive or automatic defensive fire. Uh, manual defensive fire just really <laughs> slows the game down because every time an enemy unit fires or moves next to you, uh, there's a quick computation to see if you get to move, uh, you get to return fire to them. If you're a micromanager and you like having total control over all your units, yeah, you'll go with manual defensive fire, but it's going to extend the game out. I go with automatic defensive fire. I'll just let the computer worry about the defensive fire. Uh, artillery setup this is a nice little uh, sub rule that all artillery after it moves takes some time to set up. Um, higher quality units can get it up quicker, lower quality units can't. Uh, it's kind of a little balancing factor with the Soviets since they have so much artillery and a little bit of real added a little bit of realism. So we have the artillery setup on recon spotting with fog of war off. This one really doesn't matter, but during normal play with fog of war. Recon units can spend one third of their movement and basically try to spot anything in their line of sight. Uh, again, since we're using no fog of war, that's kind of pointless. Virtual supply trucks. I hate virtual supply trucks. I hate supply. We have that turned off. Uh, night fatigue. Anybody does anything at nighttime, it's going to increase their fatigue. We kind of talked a little bit about fatigue and its effect on morale last video. Explicit supply. 
Not really sure what that does. Again, it's supply. I don't pay attention to it. But most people suggest to have it on, so I have it on. Uh, programmed weather basically just goes whatever the historical weather is. Eh, I like having it random. Nuclear scenario termination. Now, I've had this clicked on a few times, but I have never actually seen this option kick into a game. Basically, if, if one side is kicking the other side so hard, um, battlefield nuclear munitions are released and everybody loses. Kind of an interesting thing, but... Yeah. Blocking helicopter elimination. Basically, if a, a helicopter unit that's flying... Uh, is blocking a path of retreat or something like that that can be eliminated. I sometimes flip it on, sometimes I don't. Uh, low visibility air effects, again, I have it on, but we don't have fog of war on. So when you're doing uh, aerial recon, low visibility will reduce your effects of air recon. Um, optional fire results, optional assault results, I don't like having these on. The optional fire and optional assault results is basically it rolls two sets of dice. Uh, for each fire result and, ops and assaults and will uh, get the average between the two. So in the long run, you will have an even, you know, kind of a, a plateau of, of effects rather than peaks and valleys with good rolls and bad rolls. I like peaks and valleys. We, we, we have that one off. Higher fatigue recovery, kind of, eh, this really rewards people with uh, the sides with uh, better morale. Uh, most people recommend turning it off because you know you don't want your you don't want everybody to get fatigued that quicker. Uh, indirect fire and airstrikes by the map. As long as the unit can be seen by one of your people, you can drop artillery on them. Even if you can't see them, you can drop artillery on them. Uh, since you're just firing at map locations. Now, if you don't have a unit that's adjacent to them or can see them, the effects are reduced. Counter battery fire. Everybody should know what counter battery fire is. It's artillery shooting at other artillery. Uh, no low fuel effects. I would like having that one off because it's unrealistic. The unit front runs low on fuel. There should be effects for that. We have that one turned off. Optional surrender. Um, if a broken unit is attacked in close combat, it has the option of surrendering instead of being destroyed. Uh, limited air recon. Uh, again, we, do, we don't have fog of war on. Uh, quality fatigue modifier. A lot of people say do not have this one on because the higher your morale is, the better your fatigue recovery will be. So it really uh, rewards A and B uh, morale units like NATO units and really punishes uh, Soviet with their C, D, and E formations. Uh, delayed disruption reporting. I'll sometimes turn this on uh, if you've got a fog of war on, but uh, delayed disruption reporting is that if you fire at a unit, you're not necessarily sure when it's going to you won't see when it actually disrupts. It may take two or three turns for you to actually get the get the get the get the unit a note a notification that the that the uh, unit is dis, uh, disrupted. Kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. Some people like having it on. It's I guess it adds more of a realistic factor because you know if you're looking up through your binoculars a kilometer away, you can't really tell if the unit's disrupted or not. Yeah, I get that. All right, so. Oh. Dust and pollen in the air, getting in my eyes. I don't know what's going on today. Oh, my eyes, something fierce. I apologize. Anyways, all right, so let's jump into the game. All right, Warsaw Pack Command Report. Turn one of 25. Air units are available. Persistent chemical ammunition available. Eight. Persistent chemical is really cool. You got two, you got two types of chemical weapons. You got persistent and uh, non-persistent. Uh, persistent chemicals, uh, the Soviets use a lot of persistent and non-persistent chemicals. Uh, persistent chemical, if you if you use an artillery strike and hit a hex, uh, it'll the chemical strike will stay there the entire game, and anybody who moves into it or through it or is subject to the strike of it is disrupted. Really good for softening up for assaults. Um, non-persistent chemical attacks only last one turn, and then it all fades away. Uh, I actually wish... I actually do like using both persistent and non-persistent chemicals. We'll we'll get to we'll, we'll probably see it come into play in the game. Uh, artillery mine ammunition is probably one of the highest ratings I've seen for artillery mine ammunition available. NATO uses a lot of artillery mines. Usually NATO has tons of artillery mines that they can throw out. Um, Soviet forces not so much. Soviet forces never really uh, relied too much on fast cams of uh, deployable artillery minefields. So I'm kind of glad I got a bunch of a bunch of those in this one. Uh, reinforcements have arrived. Five air units recovered losses. 
I don't know really why that what that makes any difference for. So, anyways, let us take a look at kind of the grand strategic overview. Where are we? Okay, so here some of our units right here. As you can see, these are West German units. Uh, we've got some BRDM twos, and that little white line that's underneath it that means they're in column formation. So if they get shot or hit, then they'll take extra casualties, and then they don't attack as well uh, when they're in column formation. Uh, so what do we got here? Now uh, we've got is that another recon unit and another recon unit. Up, uh, up, oh, there we go. There's one of there's one of our tank battalions. Unfortunately. For those of you out there who know your tank insignias and, and your tank silhouettes, yeah, that's a P-55. Great. I got T-55s. <laughs> T-55 should have reti been retired in the 70s. But <laughs> I've got lots of T-85s. There's my engineer units, more T-55s. There's one of my rifle battalions. Now, that's one thing I do like about the Soviets is their rifle battalions are bulky. Uh, and we have a little bit of artillery. That's um, 122 millimeter uh, towed guns. So that's basically what I've got starting right now. It basically looks like the advanced elements of a armored regiment with recon elements. Uh, this right here is a persistent chemical march. So someone already hit that with persistent chemical. Improved position, trenches. Turn on that. There we go. Uh, so we've already cleared the town, and we're driving up the road. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, and so here's Aschaffenburg, right here. And you're seeing a lot of minefields. The NATO and the West Germans have been able to set up a bunch of minefields. So basically, I'm coming from down here, and I've got to get all the way up here. With T-55s. <laughs> now, I also do have this little recon unit up here. And if you want to know what you have coming on. And now, if you remember, it said in the reinforcements, we have units that have arrived at this time. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get these. So we got another tank battalion. And they're showing up here. And they just popped up. So there's that tank battalion. Oops. Wow, that was loud. Um of T-72s, so we do have some halfway decent tanks, but we also got some more, a couple more, three more rifle battalions, so that's a, that's a, a regiment right there of infantry. Um, let's see, so we've got at least two assault pincer, or two columns that we're going to be dealing with. Let's see what else we've got. Arrived another tank battalion. Where did they arrive? Right here. Yeah, more T-55s with some infantry. Yep, looks like we got some ZSUs. Yep, ZSU-23, so we got a little bit of air defense. And we got another tank battalion that showed up right down here. I don't know why they call that a tank battalion. It's more mech because it's a regiment of infantry and artillery, ZSU, and one battalion of T-72s, yay. All righty, and you can also see what is scheduled to show up. Soviets rely on numbers, lots and lots of numbers. So lots and lots of reinforcements coming. Basically, we're looking at pretty much, I will get almost the full allotment of the uh, 39th Guards Motorized Rifle and 4th Motorized Rifle Divisions. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to be looking at basically two divisions worth of equipment I'm going to be getting. So I'm going to need it for this long drive. Now granted, most of them, and I've already gone through, I won't go through and show you just because it's time consuming. Most of my reinforcements are either going to show up on this path here, this road here, or they're going to be coming up down here. Bulk of them will be showing up down here. So right away, we know my main drive is going to be generating here from the from the southeast, and hopefully we can do something here. I think I have like a reinforced battalion, maybe a maybe a, a weak regiment that does show up up here. We'll see what we can do with them. Now, I've played this scenario a few times, um, once head to head, 
I couldn't make any 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 headway with the Soviets. Um, and then I was then I played it a couple times against the computer, but not very far. So we're going to see if we can do a little bit better than we have in the past. So that is what I have. Now let's take a look at what the Germans and the Americans have. Now right away, we've got these three formations. We've got some Leopard Twos, nine Leopard Twos, you know, a reinforced company of Panzer Grenadiers, and 22 of M60 Patton's. Now. All in all, maybe the only thing that's really going to provide me any tough difficulties is Leopard 1, although having a bunch of T-55s and patents will probably do, probably give me issues too. These guys are kind of far forward. I can ignore them because if we take a look at this river that runs right here, this basically river goes all the way, you know, from, from middle of the map all the way over here, and... Almost all the bridges have been blown across. In fact, I think all the bridges have been blown across here. Let me check that. Yeah, the bridge here is damaged. The bridge here is damaged. The bridge here. Yeah, and though there's an engineering bridge there. So we do have a bridge there. So probably to try to, so NATO forces can get their units across the river. And then the other bridge I think is up here. And it's still good. Um, so those units, unless they can get back across the river, are probably going to find themselves cut off from without supply relatively soon because there's really only two bridges across that river. Oh, actually, no. That's, let me take the counters off. So we've got this. Yeah, this bridge here is still intact, but that bridge doesn't cross this river. So really, this engineering bridge is the only thing that can feed supplies to them. I'm probably going to cut that off relatively quick. Now I can just let ignore those guys and let them wither on the vine, but probably do something about them. So we'll keep that in mind for the future. All right, so now we've got here, we've got some mixed German units in defensive positions. You know, we've got you know 74 guys. They're down 67%. So they've taken some casualties. We've got some uh, anti-tank units here, Jagdpanzer Kanon. Uh, you know, covering the bridges up here. You know, the bridges are blown. And so, the since it's, and that's the other thing. Since I know there's only one good bridge across this major river, I'm either going to need to force that or use one of my engineering units. You see this lichen right there? It means he's got a bridge. So, since I've got a bridge, I can build a bridge anywhere I want. We'll be getting into that in a little bit. Um, and again, I mean, they're just... You know, no bridges across this line of the river. Now, there's a part of me that's thinking, you know, I want to take my main force, slide them all the way down here, say, build a bridge down here, bypass his main line of resistance, and try to flank him. But there's also real, no real good roads. Tanks moving off-road and through trees... I don't know if I'm going to move that fast. That's a tactic to look forward to maybe in the future, but I don't think I don't think I'm going to try that today. Um, and you know he's got yeah there's some 13 Leopard twos. You know he's got he's got enough forces there to make a river crossing difficult <laughs> for me. Uh, let's see what he's got. He's got an engineering unit and then he's got some American Pattons uh, backed up with a Gepard. Don't see those very. Thing. A couple headquarters units with some rocket artillery. You know, you got a weak infantry battalion right there. And then going up the river, you know, some more scattered German units. Uh, six and four. Okay, over anti tanks. Five leopards. Yeah, not really got much up here in the middle. But again, we're looking at a bunch of mines and plus a lot of woods for me to try to get to if I want to try to force my river crossing up there. Now up here at Laura Mon, though this bridge is still in a, is still in place, Americans are dug in pretty good. They don't have any engineering units though, so they're not going to be able to blow that bridge. So hopefully, we can force a river crossing here. I mean, I've got you know 29 tanks, oops, a regiment of infantry, mechanized infantry, 
and I've got more stuff coming. But, you know, he's got, you know, there's 17 Abrams, 250 men, another 200. So he's got 500 men right on the line, you know, 17 Abrams, you know, nine of the tow vehicles, another 16 Abrams. If we go up here a little bit, if he really wanted to, to shift down, I mean, that's another 20, 30, 30 tanks. And then up here, 40 tanks. And then he's got this big old 51 armored battalion, you know. <laughs> oh, 51 tanks, that just scares me. That he can rush up to, to if he wanted to, rush up to try to try to keep me from crossing the river. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of interesting. So we know these guys are going to try to have to try to push the bridge. Hopefully we can do that. We'll see. Soviets advancing across a river. Wonderful. But now, really, we kind of have to decide immediately, okay, where do I want my river crossing at? Do I want to try to go for the bridge at... Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I speak German. That's a really bad idea. Um, or do we want to, say, try to force the river crossing right here? Well, the, East, or the West Germans can respond to that. I kind of like putting it here, though, trying to trying to trying to trying to force like the bridge right here, because you know, the U.S. has got 220 infantry, 10 of the tow vehicles. You know, it'll be easier than trying to fight my way through. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to try to force the bridge. Try to get my engineers there. Or maybe I should do it there. Well, regardless, we're going to have to force the bridge. We're going to try to force it. I will try to get to the engineering bridge up here, but since it's an engineering bridge with his engineer, you know, it's, it would, would not be any difficulty for him to blow the bridge whatsoever. So I can't rely on trying to cross any of the bridges that are there because his engineer can blow it. So I'm going to have to force a river crossing on my own, except up here where he doesn't have any engineering guys, but I'm not getting as many forces up here. So that's what we're looking at. Um, okay, so recon units. I mean, recon units are pretty much worthless in this one since, you know, no fog of war. That's loud. I will not be able to talk over that. So let's turn movement sounds off. Wish there was a, a master volume for the, for the uh, residual sound, but... That made me jump. All right, so I moved into here, and as we see, I've already lost one vehicle. So we've got a bunch of leopards up here that were able to spot me. And as you can see, range of leopards is two. And, you know, they did a quick shot at me, and I lost one of my vehicles. And if you notice, I'm now down to 70%. And I wasn't sure what my, I don't, I'm not sure what my fatigue was that high earlier. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and now take them out of Take them out of <laughs> even taking them out of column formation has the uh, has, is is a opportunity fire trigger. Um, as you noticed before, uh, it, he killed one of my vehicles and did a little bit more fatigue. So now you see the fatigue jumped up to eighty. Uh, my movement's now fifty-eight. So we're just going to keep those guys there. Um, okay, now with these mine units, this is a strength one mine since it's, and this has got this, this is a strength one mine that's got this white marker or this white line through it. Um, it means it's been, uh, paths have been cleared through it already, so I won't take as many casualties, but I still will take some casualties. All right, as I said, we've got 30 fatigue. Let's move him there. And yeah, see, that cost me 60 of my movement points to move there, which means I'm not going to be able to move there. Let's go ahead and take them out of column move. Now, shifting a formation into column move or march move doesn't take any movement points. It's moving them out of march formation, which costs a lot of movement points. Uh, but again, this is this is recon, and you know I I don't want to sound cold and heartless, but fog of war isn't on. What good are these guys going to do me? Not much. 
So I don't think, yeah, that is annoying too. I'm gonna have to turn that off. Da -da 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 -da. I like the sound effects on now just for a little bit. Eh, oh well. All right, now what to do with these guys up here? Um. You know what? Let's have these 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 guys head up and to go and engage. The formations are they up there? Forty two. Uh, let's go ahead and move them out of column formation. Yeah, see, because I went from to down to fourteen movement points from what thirty two. So not going to have any movement points left to fire, and so we're not going to move into there. Take this guy and move him there. Thirty four. 38, move him out of column formation. So we have a little bit of a screen up there. Uh, let's go ahead and take this 70. Was not expecting to have a line of sight there. But I guess since he's on the hill, he can see down into that. And as you can see, it's a leopard with a range of two. Now, <laughs> if you notice, the D55s only have a range of one. So let's hope we have enough movement points to get him out of column formation. Do not, oops, select the unit. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Now let's go ahead and get the engineering unit moved up here. Oh, I'm not going to have enough movement points. Nope, not enough movement points to get in there. That's okay. Hmm. Should I commit the infantry to help up here as well? Yeah, let's keep the formation somewhat together. Uh, and the artillery, this is a towed artillery unit, so it has to be in travel mode or march mode. Let's see, what's the range of it? The range is seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Not really that good a range yet. So let's go ahead and just move him up to there and take him out of. Now, as you can see, it says setup required. That's because we had that optional rule clicked on earlier of setup required for artillery units. It may take a couple turns for them to get set up. All right, now let's see what we got here. Whoops, I should stop doing that. Actually, I'm the one doing it. It's doing just what I tell it to. All right, let's see. Who do we want? Let's go ahead and take the infantry unit first. Now, you can select multiple units to move at once but if you have too many units moving along a, a hex at the same time uh, it increases the amount of movement points it requires to move through so i usually just try to move one or two units at a time especially when it comes to infantry uh, just so i don't have to pay extra movement points to actually physically move them all Now, see that that's if you notice, I just I've just been clicking on on the location I wanted to go to. The computer will determine the fastest way to get there, so you don't have to really worry about uh, about hex by hex. Just all right, I want to move here. Boom, it'll take you there. Okay, give myself a little bit of air defense. Yeah, range of one hex. Now we've got this uh, armored regiment. 60 vehicles. I think I should be. Well, let's go ahead and move one, anyways, just so I don't do with that overstacking. So next turn, the engineers. We're going to have a little bit of a, a bottleneck for for a bit till we get that till we get that mine cleared out of the way. So. Could move them up here. Uh, act as, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead do that so they act as a little bit of a screen in case uh, he decides to move these uh, patents to go after my column. Uh, okay, so I got two of them. So bloop, move them there and take them out of column formation. I got these guys down here. Do I have any engineers down there? Oops. <laughs> I'll stop doing that one of these days. Uh, nope, T-72s, infantry, gun, and a ZIS unit. 
So yeah, it, it's it's no point me driving this column. Part of me would like to drive this column up here, but since that bridge is blown, or is it just it's just damaged. You know, I don't know if I can cross that if it's damaged or not. I may have to check that in the rules. Let's go ahead and recheck that. Because if I can cross that, even though it's damaged, that's the nice thing also with this game. It's that the, the instruction manual is right there under the help. Okay. Uh, for more information on damages of building bridges, see the game reviews. And I've probably already scrolled past it. Consulting demolition engineers. Bridge damage. Okay. Uh, engineering unit adjacent to a bridge may attempt to damage it. To be eligible for bridge damage, the engineering unit must not be disrupted or broken, cannot be in travel or rail mode, cannot be taken in, cannot move or fire in the same turn. If performing the damage, select the engineering unit and invoke the damage bridge command from the engineer menu in the main program. Bridge damage dialog will be displayed so that the appropriate hexite damage can be selected. Uh, note you can damage any bridge over stream or river, but damaging a bridge over stream will not break the six foot moving across the hex. Only only making cost. Yeah, anybody can move across the stream. It's just if you're doing it across a bridge, it's easier. Okay, damaged bridge hexite will appear with an orange and yellow explosion splash around the bridge. Graphic here shown in the illustration. Damage damaging bridge. Combat resolved for delayed. Clear minefields. Well, that doesn't. Bridge building, bridge dismantling, abandoned bridges, pontoon bridges. You know what? A full bridge hex, damaging, auto wired. Hmm. That really doesn't answer anything for me. We're going to go on the assumption that a damaged bridge can't be crossed. Because I don't want to spend five turns moving my formations over there, clearing part of the side, and finding out, nope, you can't, you can't move across it because it's damaged. All right, so, huh, okay, well, well, we'll just go ahead and start off by moving some infantry up. So two ways I can go. I can either take the road up to about here, cross over here. So, and then I can link up or just move over here and be part of this massive traffic jam across the stream river and then follow up alongside. And since I know this, there, there is no threat from this flank here, we're just going to go ahead and move them up to join the traffic jam. I keep wanting to scroll this up and down, but the mouse scroll is for the map. Ugh. Oh, but maybe at a time. So, all right, so let me go ahead and click. Weep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hex capacity is almost at maximum. It's at 899, so we don't want to overstack it anymore. So we'll go there. And we'll grab the follower right along behind. So, okay, that's basically um, all these guys down here. Now let's get up here. Under normal circumstances, I'd push my recon up, but like I said, no fog of war. And we'll push them up a little ways anyways. Oh, moving allowing it exceeded. All right, that's fine. I got no engineers, so I'm going to have to... Ugh, this is going to get ugly. there take them out of travel yeah because i don't want them moving up into here in travel mode because we already know abrams has got a range of two so he can probably start shooting me there 
we don't want to get shot at in column formation. So we'll just go ahead and prepare for next turn. Take another column formation. Let's do it's a range of seven. So they will probably be good set up right there. One, two, three, four, five. So that'll let them that'll let them reach out a little bit. These two guys up here take another column formation as well, and I believe that's going to be everything. Arrived, nope, up and left. Let's go ahead and take a look at our no artillery unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at our aircraft. Ah, oh wow, we got lots of aircraft. What have we got here? We got some frog foots, some frog foots, some fitters. I see 17 fitters, great. Uh, some fitter set for night recon, <sighs> fox bats for recon, frog foots. I like the SU-25s. I like the SU-22s. 17 is good. So what do we got? One, two, three. One, two, three, four decent ground attack. One not so decent ground attack, or two not so ground decent ground attack. Now it takes about 24 hours for your aircraft to recycle. So if I launch an attack with them now, I probably won't see any of those those bombers back again until next turn. And since I'm not really adjacent to anybody, I mean, I can see these guys because they have spotted them. See that little binoculars right there on the icon? That means they've been spotted. See, those guys haven't been spotted. They haven't been spotted. So I know that unit's there. So if I were to attack them, uh... It would be a normal attack because they are spotted, but if I attack them without them being spotted, it will reduce the chances. These guys are spotted. <sighs> but do I want to race the strike zone with nine leopards? When I've got, what, 20, 40, 60, 70? Nah, I, I, think, I think 70 T-55s might be able to handle nine leopards. Maybe. Uh... So yeah, I think we're sitting good. Uh, I don't think I want to launch any airstrikes yet. So I think we're done with the first turn. Now, we do have a little button so we can flip through. Yeah, all units have been considered. Uh, if you, if, if In the bigger games, if you lose track of something or if you don't know if you did something, you always got the this button right here, next stack. So if you have any stacks that haven't done anything, you can at least flip through real quick to find them. So let's go ahead and hit the first turn. And it is asking us to save it, so it auto saves every turn. And yes, I know it already exists. I am guessing that artillery strike. Expecting them to fall back across the bridge. Oh, helicopter units moving up. Crap. Wow, he is being very, very ballsy. Looks like he broke the infantry down into some sub formations. All right, 
uh, reinforcements have arrived. Air units are available. Persistent chemical. I still got eight. Artillery mine. I still got five. Zero units undisrupted or broken out of three checks. So all of my three units that were broken or in, were disrupted last turn did not come back. Five air units recovering losses. And signal intelligence detects the enemy headquarters 2629. Fog of war is off. I know what all the headquarters are anyways. So let's take a look at what he did. He had this, yep, he had this infantry company right here. And it looks like he broke them down. You can break formations down. Um, and kind of formed a line. And he actually pushed a bunch of stuff across the river. I'm actually very surprised at that. I'm going to be in for a bigger fight on my hands than I thought. All right, so let's take a look at this, yes, <laughs> this unit down here. Now, if you remember, this unit started off as a morale C unit. Fatigue went over 100, which reduced its morale capacity by 1, and it's disrupted, which reduced it by 1 as well. So the C went to an E. Now, I will go on uh, on a little bit of a tangent right now about how it checks for disruption. Um, the, I don't know if it's really a random number generator or, or, or what it is, but it's kind of annoying with the, how the, the, the disruption system works because there will be times where you will throw – you know, do five, six attacks that'll end up doing, you know, 13, 14, 15 casualties to the, to an enemy platoon, and they won't disrupt at all. I mean, you can do this, you know, eight or nine times, but for some reason, when the computer shoots at you, up oh, lose a vehicle, you're disrupted. Really? It's a fresh unit, no fatigue. I lost one vehicle out of 30, and you're telling me I'm disrupted now. It's annoying and irritating. We kind of saw that happen up here. When, yeah, these guys got disrupted off of losing one vehicle. It is what it is. It happens. Um, but the nice thing is we did some, we actually managed to do something to these Apaches. That is nice. I think we got some, and no, no, I don't have any anti-aircraft units up there. Ah, crap. Anyway, so that's what the situation is at the beginning of turn two. And I think I've probably gone on a little bit longer than I wanted to through this video. So we're going to go ahead and cut it here, and we will continue and be back. Hope everybody enjoyed. Send me questions, send me comments, send me complaints. Subscribe. You know you want to. I'll talk to everybody later. Bye.